Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to GitLab Runners. I'll walk you through how to install, register, and use a self-hosted runner in a GitLab pipeline. We'll begin with a short presentation to get you familiar with what GitLab Runner is and how it works, and then we'll start the tutorial. If you haven't already, go ahead and grab a coffee, and let's get started. Okay, let's begin by getting familiar with what GitLab Runner is and how it works. GitLab Runner is an open source application that is used to run jobs in a GitLab CI CD pipeline. And it's very similar to the concept of a Jenkins agent if you've ever worked with Jenkins before. When a GitLab pipeline is triggered, the jobs defined in the GitLab pipeline are assigned to available GitLab runners. The GitLab Runner program can be installed on your local machine, a virtual machine, a Docker container, or cloud infrastructure and it's supported on multiple operating systems. GitLab runners execute the work defined in GitLab pipeline jobs. And there are multiple types of GitLab runners. First, you can utilize a shared runner. Shared runners are available to all projects in a GitLab instance. Then there are group-specific runners, which are available to all projects in a specific GitLab group. And then there are project-specific runners, which is the type of runner that we're going to use in this tutorial. These runners are used on a single GitLab project or a set of projects with specific requirements. The next key component of the GitLab Runner program is the executor. When you install and configure a GitLab Runner, you select which type of executor you want to use with this runner. And the executor determines the runtime environment in which a pipeline job will run. For instance, you could select VirtualBox as the executor so that you can execute jobs inside of a virtual machine. You can also use the shell of the host machine that GitLab Runner is installed on as the executor. So this is almost equivalent to writing a shell script uh, with the same commands that are included in the pipeline job, um, but instead we're having the GitLab Runner uh, execute those commands in the shell of the host machine. We can also use remote SSH as the executor, and in this case, the GitLab Runner program will connect to a remote machine and uh, send the job instructions to that remote machine, and the remote machine will uh, execute those uh, pipeline job instructions. This executor is not commonly used, and in GitLab's documentation, they actually encourage, uh, encourage you to use other executors instead of the remote SSH executor. Docker is another executor option that we can use. The Docker executor option is commonly used, and in this workflow, the GitLab runner is installed on the host machine of the uh, Docker container. And when a pipeline job is assigned to the GitLab runner, the GitLab runner will pull the uh, Docker image that's specified in the GitLab pipeline. It will start the container and then execute the job instructions inside of the Docker container. Similar to the Docker executor, we can also use the Kubernetes executor. And in this case, the job will be executed on a Kubernetes cluster. And the last option is to write your own custom executor uh, for environments that are not natively supported by GitLab Runner. Something worth mentioning is the ability to monitor GitLab Runners. The Runner program has an embedded Prometheus Metrics HTTP server for monitoring. And you can monitor metrics like the GitLab Runner business logic, uh, Go specific process metrics, general process metrics, and build version information. Tags are a very useful feature of GitLab Runners. When you install and register a GitLab Runner program, you can add tags to the Runner program that can be referenced in a GitLab pipeline. When you reference a tag inside of a GitLab pipeline YAML file, you're filtering for only runners with that specific tag. So when the GitLab pipeline uh, runs, uh, only runners matching the tags that you specified in the pipeline will be able to execute the jobs in the pipeline. And so this is really useful if the pipeline requires specific dependencies uh, in the runtime environment of the jobs. So for instance, if you're trying to build a Python application or running a Python script, you would need the uh, runtime environment to have Python installed as a dependency. So uh, you might have a Python tag for GitLab runners that are installed in an environment that includes Python as a dependency. So why do we want to host and manage our own GitLab runners? 
Well, first, it could potentially save us money by hosting um, GitLab runners on our own infrastructure as opposed to utilizing uh, GitLab runners hosted and managed by GitLab.com. The second reason I can think of is customization. You might have specific requirements for your product or your organization has specific requirements that might push you towards um, self-hosting uh, your GitLab runners. And the last reason is security. Uh, you might be required by your uh, organization's IT to host the GitLab runners inside of the corporate environment uh, for security reasons. So the next question is how do we self-host GitLab Runner? And the first step is to install GitLab Runner on a target host. And remember that this could be on a virtual machine, it could be on your local machine, it could even be inside of a Docker container. So you can install the GitLab Runner program itself inside of a Docker container. The next step would be to configure the GitLab Runner program on the target host, which would include choosing an executor and also registering the GitLab Runner with the GitLab instance that it's going to be uh, running jobs for. And then finally, we would run a GitLab pipeline that utilizes uh, our runner, maybe via a tag that was assigned to the runner at configuration time. Now, if you intend on following along with the tutorial, there are some prerequisites. First, you'll need a GitLab account. You'll also need a virtual machine or some other infrastructure like your local machine in order to install the GitLab Runner program. In this video, I'll be using a Linux machine as the GitLab Runner's host, a GitLab project. And finally, you'll need Docker installed on the target machine that the GitLab Runner program is also installed on. And this is because I'll be using the Docker executor. And one other thing I'd like to mention is that the GitLab project that I'm going to be using uh, is linked in the video description below. So now that we have some additional context on the GitLab Runner program, let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is navigate to the GitLab project that I wanna create a GitLab Runner for. And remember uh, that during the presentation, I mentioned that we are going to be creating a project-specific GitLab Runner. And to do that, I would navigate to the project, which I'm currently in the project. And then on the left-hand side menu, uh, I'll scroll down here to Settings, and then select CICD. And then I'm going to select Expand in the Runners section. And if I scroll down here, we have two uh, sections. We have the Specific Runners and the Shared Runners section. And if you remember from the presentation, uh, Shared Runners are shared across an entire GitLab instance. And in this case, we're using GitLab.com. so all of the runners that you see in this list here uh, can be used by anyone on GitLab.com. And in contrast, we have specific runners. And as you can see here, uh, these are GitLab runners that are specific to this particular project. And it also lists the steps that we need to take in order to install the GitLab runner program and register uh, the runner with GitLab.com and this project. So let's go ahead and open up uh, this documentation for uh, the installation process. And there's multiple ways that we can install the GitLab Runner program on a Linux machine. Uh, in this video, I'm going to uh, utilize the GitLab Runner binaries to install it. So I'm gonna select the binary section. And then I'll select Install on Linux. And we can install the Runner program uh, through a Debian package, but I'm going to um, use the binary file. I'm going to download the binary file. So I'm going to select this link here. And the first step is to download the binary file. Uh, here it says download one of the binaries for your system. Uh, I'm going to select the uh, top URL here since uh, I'm on a 64-bit system, but be sure to check your architecture before selecting one of these URLs and confirm it's the right um, the right binary that you're about to download. So I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. And once I have it copied to my clipboard, I'm going to open up a terminal session and I'm going to paste that command uh, into my terminal window. So this is going to download the GitLab binary into user local bin.
And now that we've downloaded it, the next step is to make it uh, an executable file. Uh, so I'm going to uh, copy this command here and navigate back to my terminal, paste that in. And uh, once we've made it an executable uh, file, uh, the next step is to create a GitLab user. So uh, the program is going to be ran as root, but um, the jobs themselves will be ran as this user that we create here. Uh, so the user that we're going to create is going to be called GitLab hyphen runner. So I'm going to copy this command to my clipboard and I'll paste that in. And after the GitLab runner user has been created, uh, we'll then install and run the GitLab runner program uh, as a service. So that's going to be these two commands here. So in the first command, we invoke the install command and uh, we pass in several options. The first one is the user option. And we set that to be the newly created GitLab runner user. And then we also set the working directory as home uh, GitLab runner. And then immediately after installing the GitLab runner program as a service, uh, we start the service. So I'm going to copy these commands to my clipboard and navigate back to my terminal and we'll paste them in. And it looks like both commands ran successfully. Uh, if I wanna check the status of the service, I can do sudo GitLab runner status. And then we can see that the service is currently running. And let's also take a look at the service file uh, in the system folder. So if I do sudo cat Okay, we have this uh, GitLab runner uh, service file. And if we take a look at the service block, uh, you can see the uh, execute start command. Uh, it invokes the GitLab runner binary uh, with the run command and it specifies the working directory, the config file, which is a file that you can uh, manually change if you, if you want to. And then we specify the service name and the user that will be used to run uh, the GitLab runner uh, jobs. So of course we could manage the service just like other services using uh, the system control command. Um, we could start and stop the service and check the status of it. Uh, but as you can see, we can also uh, just use the GitLab runner um, binary to, to manage the service. Now after we've started the GitLab runner service, the next step would be to register the GitLab runner with our GitLab project. And to register the GitLab runner, what we're going to do is type in sudo GitLab runner and then register. And it prompts us to enter the GitLab instance URL. And in our case, we are using gitlab.com. So I'm going to type in uh, gitlab.com. And then we have to input the registration token. And to get our registration token, we have to navigate back to the GitLab project. So if I go back to the browser and then to CICD settings, uh, here we have the registration token. So I'm going to copy this to my clipboard and then navigate back to my terminal. And I'm going to paste in that token and hit enter. And I'm going to call this runner test runner. And now it prompts us to enter any tags that we want associated with this runner. Now the pipeline, I haven't showed the pipeline in this project, but the pipeline uh, includes an invocation to Python. Um, so I'm going to uh, add the Python tag to this GitLab runner because it's going to run a Docker image that includes a Python installation. So I'm gonna say Python and hit enter. I'm going to leave the maintenance note blank and the registration is exceeded, but now we have to select what kind of executor we want to use with this GitLab runner. And you can see the possible options that uh, we can select uh, here. But as I mentioned before, we're going to be using Docker. So I'm going to type in Docker and hit enter. And after selecting Docker, it prompts me to enter a default Docker image that should be used when uh, running a pipeline job. And I'm going to enter the example they show here, um, Ruby 2.7. It doesn't matter because we're going to override the uh, Docker image in the pipeline script. So I'll hit enter. 
And as you can see from the message, it says that the runner was registered successfully. So we can verify that at the command line and we can also verify it in the UI. So at the command line, I'm going to say sudo GitLab runner verify. And in the message, it says verifying runner is alive and then it gives the runner ID. And if I navigate back to the CICD settings page in GitLab, I'll refresh the page and I'll navigate back to the runners section. And as you can see under the specific runners section, uh, we now have a runner listed here and uh, its status is green. We can also see the description of the runner that we entered at the command line, as well as any of the tags that we associated uh, with this particular GitLab runner. And in this case, the only one that we added was a Python tag. And if we wanted to update any of the details of the runner, we could select edit here and then adjust the configuration of the runner. Um, we can see things like its IP address. We can update the description. We can set a maximum job timeout. And this would be used if a job lasted past a certain period, let's say it uh, lasted over an hour, we can set a timeout period where the job will automatically be um, you know, killed after that timeout period. And uh, we can also adjust the tags as well. And now that we have an available runner, I'm actually going to turn off shared runners for this project. So the only runner that's going to be able to be used in a pipeline is going to be this uh, runner. So I'm going to turn uh, shared runners off. And I'm going to navigate to my GitLab pipeline. So under the CICD section, I'm going to select editor. And let's take a look at the pipeline that I've written. So if you're not familiar with GitLab pipelines already, uh, I definitely suggest taking a look at my other video introducing you to GitLab pipelines. Uh, we actually use this specific pipeline in that video. Um, it's slightly modified in this video, but it's uh, generally the same. I'm going to quickly walk through the pipeline and then I'm going to run the pipeline to verify that our GitLab runner is being used uh, to execute the pipeline jobs. So at line one, we define the Docker image that should be used um, by the GitLab runner when executing this pipeline. And the image that I've selected is a Docker image that includes Python. And directly after the image keyword, we have the default block. The GitLab default keyword allows me to set global defaults for other keywords, which means that if a job doesn't explicitly specify a particular value for a keyword, such as tags, then uh, the value that is defined under the default block will be used for that job. And as you can see in this particular default block, I've defined a tags keyword and we've uh, set the Python tag, which is the tag associated with uh, our self-hosted GitLab runner. Now, if I wanted to use different GitLab runners per job, I could also do that and set the tag value at the job level rather than under the the default keyword. So instead of under the default keyword, uh, we would include the tags keyword and uh, associated tag values under uh, a particular job uh, declaration. So if this pipeline runs correctly, it should utilize our runner for all of the jobs that are defined in this uh, pipeline. And if we take a look at the other parts of the pipeline, we have three stages defined, the build, test, and deploy stage. And then we have the build job, and the build job is doing some kind of arbitrary steps, just echoing to the console, uh, making a build directory, creating an artifact. And then we have um, two test jobs. Again, these two jobs are just performing arbitrary steps in the script uh, section. And then for the last job, the deploy job, uh, we're actually invoking Python 3 uh, and checking the version. So remember that we're uh, running the job inside of a Docker container that has Python installed. And that's one thing that I should have mentioned earlier as kind of a, a prerequisite or a requirement. Uh, if you're following along with this tutorial, uh, since we selected Docker as the executor, you'll need to have Docker installed on the machine that um, the GitLab runner is installed on. If you don't have Docker installed on your machine, but maybe you have Python installed on your machine, and you'd rather the executor uh, be 
shell instead of uh, Docker as the executor, you can actually modify the configuration of the GitLab uh, runner program uh, by just modifying the config.toml uh, file, which is um, located here. And as you can see in the config file, uh, the executor is defined here as Docker. And I think this is also uh, the settings that are specific to the Docker executor. Um, but I think we would want to just simply change this to shell if you wanted to um, run the jobs just in your host machine's shell so that if you had Python installed on your host machine, it would just work um, by running directly on the host machine as opposed to uh, inside of a Docker container. So I'm going to navigate back to GitLab and then to pipelines. And we're going to run a new pipeline to verify that our runner is being used when the pipeline is ran. So I'm going to select run pipeline. And let's take a look at the build job. So the build job uh, runs pretty quickly. And as you can see at the very top here, it says running with GitLab runner uh, on test runner, which is the runner that we created. And then on line four, it confirms that we're using the Docker executor with the Python image and it pulls the Python image uh, down. And in this particular job, we're not invoking Python, so it's not necessary to uh, have the Python uh, image in this particular case, uh, but it still uh, uses it. And then on the right-hand side, we have the tags that are referenced by the job, which in this case is Python. So we are referencing the correct uh, GitLab runner, uh, which is the runner that's installed on this machine. Now, it might also be worthwhile to take a look at the deploy job as well, just to confirm uh, the uh, Python uh, invocation worked correctly. So if we take a look at the deploy job uh, console output, uh, we can see where Python was invoked and it does print it to the console. So it looks like everything is working correctly. Now I've demonstrated one possible way of uh, installing and running the GitLab runner program uh, with a particular executor configuration. In this case, we use the uh, Docker executor but if you're interested in a particular configuration, for instance, maybe running a GitLab runner inside of a Docker container as opposed to having it installed on the host machine, uh, and maybe not using the Docker executor, but using the Kubernetes executor or something like that, um, please let me know in the comments and I will definitely consider uh, doing another video on a particular configuration. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it valuable. If so, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.